Okay, so let's get started with another style of proof. Again, this isn't the full-blown proof. Normally in a trig proof, I would say, here's your identity. Go ahead and show me that's true. And it would be up to you to take all those steps in there and justify your reasons. But for this one, we're just getting started. What I want you to do is take a look at this identity. Here are some possible steps. Okay, those are some things that I think you might find useful. Some of them are just distractors. And I want you to change the right side of this proof in red until it matches the left side. Okay, so here's how we're going to do that. Um, you can either look through each step and see which one of them comes directly from this. Okay, that's one method. I don't love it. Um, what I would rather you're doing at this point is trying some idea of a proof on your own. Okay, so I'll give you an example. I'm going to say cosine fourth of beta minus cosine squared of beta. And as I think about the things that might come in useful here, um, I come up with the idea of factoring. Okay? Now, I come up with the idea of factoring because I've done a ton of proofs. And as you come up, as you do a ton of proofs, you will get better at this and you'll see patterns and you'll get to know what sort of works and what doesn't. So when I factor out that cosine squared that I think is the GCF, look what I get. Cosine squared beta minus 1. And I don't even need to know where I'm going. Honestly, what's important to me is that I see this right here, this cosine squared minus 1, and I think, aha, I know that is related to the Santa Claus identity. Okay, so if you remember what Santa Claus stands for, Santa Claus is number 1, right? That is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, which means if you rearrange it a bit, you can get this, cosine squared minus 1, can I get my square to look right? There we go. Cosine squared minus 1 equals negative sine squared. So if I make that substitution and turn this into cosine squared beta times negative sine squared beta, here we go. And that's pretty nice. And at this point, honestly, I don't really know where I'm going anymore. So I take a look at what I'm trying to do. I want to get this in the form of sine to the fourth minus sine squared. And I think, oh, well... Maybe if I got rid of all the cosines, that would help. So let's use another Santa Claus identity and make this factor on the left 1 minus sine squared beta. I still have negative sine squared beta here. And I think, great, now everything is sine squared, so let's just multiply this out again, see what we get. I'm going to have negative sine squared beta. That's 1 times negative sine squared beta. And negative sine squared beta times negative sine squared beta is positive sine to the fourth beta. Okay, take a quick look at where we're going, and look, they match. They're exactly the same thing. So having done that proof, now I've got a pretty good idea of where I'm trying to go here. Step one was GCFs. Okay, that was step number one. I wanted to pull out a cosine squared. So as I look down this list, here we are. Let's go right here. So that's going to be step number one, G. And then my step number two, if I go down my list here, what did I do then? Then I made a Pythagorean substitution where I traded out cosine squared minus one for negative sine squared. So what do we have in here? I don't see anything exactly like my step two, but I see something that is a combination, okay, right here, one minus sine squared and negative sine squared. Okay, that's pretty good. I don't think there's anything... No, there's nothing else I can use. So we're going to say that is step C. Uh, step C. Yeah, that's step number two. Except in this example, I didn't go straight there. I didn't go there in two steps. I went there in one step down to this part right here, which is basically trading all your cosines for sines using the Santa Claus identity. Okay, what comes next? After that, we did some multiplication. So I'm looking for this. I'm looking for a sine squared, a negative sine squared plus a sine to the fourth. So where can I find one of those? Negative sine squared plus, there it is. This guy right here, negative sine squared plus sine to the fourth. That is step E. And the last step was just a small rearrange, rearranging of this. Okay, I wanted to turn uh, negative sine squared sine fourth into sine fourth minus sine squared. So that's a, a really minor thing. Where is it? Right here. F. Okay. So this is the order that I would place these steps. 
G, C, E, F. And if you look over the ones we didn't use, okay, see these guys? They are just complete distractors. They would not be right. Sometimes they're off by a plus or minus sign. Sometimes they have nothing to do with the problem, although that's rare. Uh, sometimes it's based on incorrect factoring, you know. But I think it's helpful if you try to do a proof on your own, walk through some steps, and then look back here and see if you can find them. If you're not making any progress that way, go ahead, look at these steps, see if there's anything that makes sense as the very next thing to do with where we start out.